And we're back in the room, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once more to The Cayman Show, the show that keeps on giving. Don't forget, if you're YouTube viewers, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Subscription is free after all, and everybody wants something for nothing. And today, for your pleasure, I have award-winning author, editor, publisher, coming to us from far, far away over the pond there. I give you Stephen Holy Martin. How the devil are you, sir? Welcome to the show. It is a pleasure. Well, I'm doing great. Uh, I'm very excited about having our little chat today. Excellent yeah. stuff. Well, where, whereabouts are you coming to us from, Stephen? I'm coming you, uh, to you from Richmond, Virginia, which is the uh, old capital of the Confederacy, which is politically incorrect nowadays. <laughs> yeah, that's a many other things, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful sunny day, blue sky, 70 degrees. You know, it couldn't be nicer. Excellent stuff. Yeah, here I am in, well, not so sunny <laughs> South Wales with, I think I got three layers on and uh, it's 8 p.m. at night and it's absolutely freezing. Absolutely brassic, as we like to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I've been to Wales before. I, I couldn't believe it. I walked into a store and I, I got out of my car, was going to go buy something. I walked into a store. They were all speaking this strange language that I'd never heard. <laughs> And it didn't have any vowels in it. I, I didn't know what they were saying. I mean, ah, was... they were. <laughs> uh, you don't shout a comrade? No? <laughs> no, I don't know whatever well. that means. <laughs> nakois, nakois. <laughs> yeah, no, the Welsh I, language. I, I guess when you went up north or up west then, when you were in Wales. Uh, yeah, I think it was Cardiff or something. Is that a town? Oh, yeah, Cardiff. Oh, that's in the south. <laughs> there. That's the, I'm, I'm just north of Cardiff. I am myself, a place called Merthyr Tedville. So, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. It's, the, it's more for the Welsh language now, though, up in, up in the north of the country, you know, so uh, they, they still speak it as, as a first language there, down, down in the south, however. It's, it's coming back. It's starting to come back. But in schools and whatnot, you're not taught everyday language if you're with me you just taught like once a week a welsh lesson and everything you know so uh yeah it's down to the yeah, well, this was a while ago this was probably i don't know 25 30 years ago it was i used to go to england a lot i had a client in london uh, in the city i guess you call it that part of london and uh used to go over there fairly often and i'd take time go traveling around see the countryside going down go to wales go to uh, i don't know um down to the southwest there beautiful country beautiful yeah great beautiful. stuff some great landscape some great seascape as well it's uh, it's fantastic mm -hmm. there's lots to see if if, the, yeah. if you get the weather that is you know and yeah. the, the trouble is we don't always get the weather in fact it's it's we seldom get the weather <laughs> yeah well you know i went there once it was almost 90 degrees i couldn't believe it you know it almost, i felt like i was at home you got lucky you got lucky we used to <laughs> we used to have august like that now the seasons seem to be changing we seem to have our heat waves in april um it's <laughs> and uh yeah we have summer in autumn we have uh have, I've, I've spring in the winter. We have uh, winter in the summer. It's, it's a bit all over the place at the moment. But hey, it is what it is. We dress accordingly, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like Virginia because uh, my sister who moved to Florida, people would ask her, did you miss the changing of the seasons? And she said, no, all I do have to do is come to Virginia for a week and I get all four of them. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, that sounds very much like my hometown of Merthyr Tindall. We often have four seasons in a day, you know, but, uh, nah, great stuff. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, so, it's massive published author. Um, so for those watching, for those listening, first of all, I guess, if we can get a brief introduction to yourself, if you can just tell us really how, where, when and why did you get into writing, first of all, I suppose. Something I've always been interested in uh, is writing, and I've enjoyed it. You know, I remember I, I wrote a uh, uh, essay, I guess, in what uh, in the U.S. we would call middle school, mm. and I got a good grade on it, and it kind of encouraged me to keep going with Excellent. it. Excellent. I uh, was it. in the advertising. Yeah, I was in the advertising business for a long, long time, and uh, I did a lot of writing with that. And uh, but I always wanted to write books, and. I guess I wrote my first one uh, in about 1983 or 84, and uh, I got it published, but I didn't like, you know, the publisher didn't do much with it. So 
after a while, I wrote some more books, but I decided to start my own publishing business. And I now have a, what you would call a small press that has over a hundred books or so, you know, in print and uh, love people as well. I, I edit books and I do a lot of ghost writing. And so if any of your listeners want to have a book published, have them come to my website, and send me an email and we can, we can discuss it. Brilliant stuff. Let's hear, let's hear it. Was, repeat that. Sorry, I was talking over you then. <laughs> Yeah, the, the website is shmartin.com. That's S, like Stephen, H, Holly, Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N, shmartin.com. And you can just click on the contact uh, uh, tab up at the top, and it'll take you to, to a page where you can send me an email, and I'll get back to you right away. That's fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. So, so do you remember what your first published work was then? My first published book was a, I guess you'd call it a thriller, but it had a romance in it too. So it could also be a uh, romantic suspense novel. Uh, and then after that, I wrote a, I've always been, not always, but I've been interested in metaphysics for a long time. Mm. When I was uh, only 25 years old and working in, in an advertising agency, uh, I got a bad, bad case of the flu, and I did some things I shouldn't do, and I had uh, some, you know, I went, I was in an apartment living with two other guys, you call them flats, I think. Yeah, uh, flats, two flat other guys. Mates, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I heard people coming into the apartment, it was uh, a Saturday night, and then before long, there was a big party going on. Mm -hmm. Sounds familiar. I, here I was feeling terrible, but but I decided I would get up and join the party and maybe I'd feel better. Well, I had a few drinks and I had a few smokes and I did things I shouldn't do. And I knee walked back to my bed and I flopped down on it. And the next thing I knew, I popped out of my body and I was looking down at myself on the bed and I kind of looked like roadkill. Yeah. And uh, being there. The, the thing is, I, <laughs> the thing is, I, uh, I was brought up in a family that didn't believe anything existed if, if you couldn't see it under a microscope. They were mm. scientific materialists. And I thought that's what reality was. Well, that uh, looking down at myself from up at the ceiling, kind of, I had an epiphany. I realized that I was not my body. And I've been trying to figure out what the true nature of reality is ever since. And that was a long, long time ago. So. Uh, that started me on a quest, and I've written a bunch of books about it, which you could also see on my website. Just click on the tab that says books. And uh, I guess my best seller uh, over the last few years has been uh, a book called Life After Death, Powerful Evidence, You Will Never Die. And I did a lot of research in that book, and I've got uh, studies that have been done by major universities here, like the University of Virginia and Duke University and, and other uh, institutions of higher learning. So, uh, you know, if you have any doubts about whether you're uh, going to survive, at least your consciousness, survive your physical death, then you ought to read that book because Excellent. it's pretty powerful evidence. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to... What do you think, about, what I, do you think gonna, of that? That's brilliant. I, I'm going to fess up <laughs> with you now, though, right? I'm going to fess up with you. <laughs> I am skeptical, all right. I, I'm, uh, I'm, I hate the term on the fence, but I'm on the fence. I, I'm not sure where I am, <laughs> what I believe. Let, let's talk, if we can, then a, a little bit about your beliefs in this, then, and, and your discoveries in this. Um, life after death. Let's let's start with our perfect place to start. Um, so, say you're, you're face to face with someone now who says, right, we're born, we live. We do what we can, we die, that's it. What, what would you say to them? Probably nothing I say is going to change that, but uh, there has been a study going on for almost 60 years at the University of Virginia, and the, they've studied a number of aspects, but the thing that really stands out to me is that they have investigated over 2,500 cases of children who remember past lives, and they have checked them out. They've actually, uh, what they call is they solved over two thirds of them. And that means that they found some, uh, someone that fit the description, fit the name, fit the name of the town, the other things that the child said, 
all fit together. And, uh, and it appears that that child was remembering a past life over wow. 20. Uh, well, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, this is something that was started by a man named Ian Stevenson at uh, the University of Virginia. He was actually a Canadian who was at the time head of the Department of, uh, of Psychiatry at the University of Virginia School of Medicine. And the, uh, there's also a, uh, uh, a hospital. And, and he became interested in this. And he got a grant from the uh, gentleman who, dis who uh, discovered or developed the Xerox process back in the mm -hmm. 1960s for copying papers and so forth who had apparently made a huge amount of money, gave a lot of money to the University of Virginia to study reincarnation because this guy was interested in it, this Xerox guy. And so they've been studying it ever since, for, since uh, I believe uh, they began in about 1962, so almost 60 years now. And they have investigated, I think it's something like 2,600 cases now. And, and the Ian Stevenson has written a bunch of books about it. He's now dead. He died in 2007. But they, his research carries on. And uh, <clears throat> there have been probably a dozen books written about it. So Ian Stevenson wrote a number himself. And, and the people who've taken over since have also uh, a guy named Jim B. Tucker, who uh, if you go on YouTube and put Jim B. Tucker in and... Uh, 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 reincarnation. I'm sure that all kinds of videos will pop up because he's interviewed a lot uh, on YouTube videos. So anyway, mm -hmm. that's that's one thing that really caused me to uh, uh, understand that our, and this is what the University of Virginia's conclusion they've come to after all this research is that the brain does not actually create consciousness. The brain is a receiver of consciousness <clears throat> that integrates it with your body that uh, consciousness is a non-physical thing. You may know, for example, that, uh, that biologists and, and medical people call consciousness the hard problem. Mm. And the reason they call it the hard problem is because they can't figure out how the brain creates it, how matter creates consciousness. And of course, the reason they can't figure it out is because it doesn't. <laughs> The uh, brain is a receiver of consciousness. <clears throat> We're actually all uh, spiritual beings, eternal spiritual beings having a physical experience right now. So that's the conclusion I came to after a long uh, time, after uh, really doing a lot of research. And I started out like you. I was a skeptic. I didn't even occur to me that that there would be life after death or or anything like that, because the family I was brought in up in uh, didn't believe it. And of course, in school, the science they teach you says that all that exists is uh, material substance mm -hmm. matter. <clears throat> but you know, we uh, matter as people who came up with that theory thought of it doesn't really exist. They're really the only thing that exists is energy. Uh, quantum physicists will tell you that, you know, E equals MC squared, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. And uh, so there is nothing really physical. Everything is energy. And we're energy. Consciousness is energy. All is energy. And everything is connected. All is one. Brilliant. Well, that's fascinating. If, if we can go back to that, that study you mentioned, uh, there was a figure 2,000 and... 600. 2,600, yeah. Can I just ask, out of how many of those did you say there was evidence found that their, their stories or their claims were, were accurate to some degree? 70%. So, wow, that's, that's a large percentage then as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, so, can you pinpoint uh, one example at all of, of one story or not? Yeah, the biggest one that comes to mind is uh, one of a young young man, still a young man, fairly young. He was born in 1999. And he, uh, he began having nightmares when he was two years old. Usually children, if they're going to remember a past life, life, they'll start talking about it when they start talking, which is usually around 18 months, two years. Yeah, thereabouts, sir. 
and they will continue uh, up, up until they're five or six, <clears throat> and then they just kind of forget about it and become normal. But this child uh, began by having nightmares. His he would his parents would wake up in the middle of the night and because he was screaming, uh, he was screaming something to the effect of uh, little man can't get out, air, airplane on fire and things like that. Anyway, he started talking about, to make a long story short, being a World War II fighter pilot uh, who was shot down at the Battle of Iwo Jima in the Pacific in spring of 1945. Jeez. Sorry, what, what, what age was he then? Did you say he was about two years old at this point? About two years old. Wow. And his parents uh, were Southern Baptists. And uh, over in UK, you may not know what a Southern Baptist is, but that's pretty hardcore. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they didn't believe it, of course, but they didn't discourage him from talking about it. They did write down things that he said. And uh, the thing that happened that kind of got his mother... Uh, to think maybe he really was reincarnated was that he, they went to a uh, a uh, aviation museum where there was a, a, a World War II fighter plane. Yeah. And the fighter plane had uh, these tanks under the wings. And uh, his mother said something like, uh, you know, those bombs, she referred to them bombs. And she said, no, mom, they're not bombs. They're drop tanks. They're what uh, make the plane make the plane able to go farther. They're gasoline tanks, and wow. that, of course, is what they were, what they are. That's incredible. So, <laughs> so anyway, long story short, he his father was very much against the idea of reincarnation, but he's his father asked him, "Well, if you were a pilot in this uh, fighter plane." Where did where were you? What what was the name of your ship? And he said he was a flew off an aircraft carrier, and he said uh, I, it was named the Natoma, N A T O M A, and so his father went and found a a book of uh, uh, ships of World War II and looked it up, and, and sure enough, there was an aircraft carrier called the Natoma Bay. That's absolutely blown me away, <laughs> and uh, anyhow. He uh, remembered the names of friends that he flew with, and uh, he remembered the names, his own name. It was John Houston or something like that. Mm -hmm. His name in this life was John Hen uh, Henning Helen Henninger, Henninger, I think. And anyway, they looked up his friends. The friend said, yes, uh, this guy who he said he was, John Houston, was shot down at the Battle of Iwo Jima. He, Iwo Jima. He, uh, his plane was hit right on the nose on the engine with an anti-aircraft uh, gun and went down in flames. And his father took him to a reunion. This was back in the early uh, 2000s. Still a lot of people alive from World War II. Yeah. Took him to a reunion of people from the Natoma Bay and he recognized his friends. Whoa. And their names. Jeez. So, I mean, <laughs> so anyhow, and he ended up meeting his sister from the former life. <laughs> how did that go? How, do, how did that meeting go? Well, you know, the sister was more skeptical at first, but then after she met him and they were talking, apparently he, uh, you know, he convinced her. So that's amazing. He knew things, he knew things that he couldn't have known yeah. otherwise. And, uh, you know, he's now probably 20 years old, but uh, not surprisingly, and I don't know what he's doing now, but uh, he wanted to be a pilot. <laughs> really? <laughs> so oh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but well, anyway, if, that's... If it's in the blood, you know. Yeah. But there this, are a lot of stories. Like the last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of stories like that that the people at the University of Virginia have discovered. I mean, this one is perhaps one of the most amazing because if he, he did remember so much. He even told his parents that he... Uh, saw them at the uh, pink hotel on the beach in Hawaii mm. and decided they would be good parents. And that's why he became their son. Wow. And, and indeed they had had their honeymoon 
there on, in a pink hotel on the beach in Hawaii. Jeez. And that's where he was conceived. And, and this, this is still all coming from a two-year-old in front, yeah? Well, it was between the age of two and six or something. Yeah, yeah, still. As he still got... Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a lot of a, a lot to research and a lot to figure out on your own when you're between two and six, you know. One of the things that is uh, that makes me think of something that that might you might find interesting, and your listeners might find interesting, and that is that these children who remember past lives have a much higher IQ typically mm. than uh, than children who just are normal. Uh, okay. You know. So yeah, usually around uh, 115 to 100. 30 or something in that range. So they they talk more, they are, you know, more with it because I guess they're very close. And another thing, this particular story that I told you was quite a time for a uh, lapse between the death of the, in the past life in 1945 and the birth in 1999. Usually it happens a lot quicker. In fact, mm. the, the average or the mean, I'm not sure which is which, which, but anyway, it's only 15 months between the previous life and the birth. So it takes nine months of pregnancy. So, mm. but uh, his, there were outliers. His is an outlier on that uh, score on the time between the previous life and the, and the current one. Yeah, yeah. that's fascinating. That is. So, so, so obviously we're, we're into reincarnation now, right? I want to stay here for a bit if we can and talk a little more about that. So from your knowledge and your beliefs then what's what's the process if, if that's the right word be that the right word for for reincarnation then how how does it how does it happen from we we pass on in this world uh where do we go from there well we go to a non-physical realm and there really are it's really a mental realm everything is mind mm. you know the uh, my let me just give you a quick overview of my idea of what the true nature of reality is and i've Perfect. talked to a number of number of quantum physicists quantum uh, people who study quantum mechanics people who study quantum mechanics say that uh, most of them they're not all in agreement everything came from what they call a unified field the unified field if you really dig down what they're talking about the unified field is sort of a pre pre-conscious state and the, but it's what it becomes is consciousness. And, and so what I, the way I envision reality is it's, it's just giant, infinite uh, mind that is conscious, but also has thought forms in it. And we are each extensions of that infinite mind the mind, the infinite mind being all that is, it can't really step outside itself and think about itself. It's because it is everything. So what it does, it sends out little sparks, if you want to call it, or little whirlpools of mind that come to think they're separate, but in fact are still connected to or extensions of the infinite mind. And that is how the infinite mind, uh, evolves and the whole uh scheme of things is evolution we're all evolving we we started out as you know little one-celled animals in the sea or whatever and we're we're now at the top of the food chain on this planet but there are certainly others around the universe who are a lot more advanced than we are eventually we uh well, you, no you, longer... you mean aliens yeah yeah, extraterrestrials, if you want to say. I mean, yeah. we could get into that. That'd be a whole other uh, podcast, perhaps. But uh, Definitely. <laughs> but there, yeah. Uh, for example, Ra, R-A, Ra, was a god in ancient Egypt. Ra is actually a, uh, a group soul who incarnated in ancient Egypt, but also came through a woman named Carla in the 1980s and kind of laid out all this kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Mm. And uh, Ra is on the in the sixth density. We are right now in third density, passing into fourth density. And so we got a long way to catch up to Ra. Mm -hmm. But we, we go through these different, we, we evolve. The whole scheme of things is evolution. And eventually when we 
we reach the seventh density or so, we, we return to the source and, and it all starts all over again. But anyhow, uh, where were we? We were talking about, uh, you asked me a question, Donald, and I think- Yeah, I just so, uh, uh, firstly, I, I asked you about reincarnation. What, if the right word is the process, basically, of reincarnation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> well, back when I, after I had this out-of-body experience that I mentioned at the beginning, I was, I went into, uh, you know, trying to figure things out. And I joined the Rosie Crucian Society, and, and I don't know if you know what that is, but it's it's a society no, of explain? well, it's a society of mystics that study metaphysical laws, and it's been around for a long time. A number of our founding fathers in the United States, uh, Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin, others were uh, were Rosie Crucians, okay. and the Rosie Crucians, uh, I guess many of them were also deists, which means that they back then, which means that they believe that God created the universe and kind of wound it up and let it go, you know, created all the laws mm. and let it go. And- uh, Do you believe in that at all? Uh, I think that I do to a certain extent, but I think that we each have a higher self who does kind of guide us and sometimes protect us when we do stupid things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like drunks, you know, what is the thing about- <laughs> God protects idiots and drunks or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, what the Rosicrucians say, and again, they've been around a long time, and I think they know what they're talking about, mm. is that typically uh, an incarnation, it's, it's, 40, it's 140 years on average between. So you're born, you live, if you live 70 years, for example, you're going to be 70 years on the other side, and then you're going to be born again. And Typically, the reason you keep coming back is because you have lessons to learn, things to mm. learn to help you grow. And some would say that's karma. For example, if um, you're the sort of individual who attracts a member of the opposite sex who's, who's um, not right for you, who abuses you either mentally or physically, and you keep doing that after, one time after another, that's something that you need to overcome. Yeah, and have so you been you, spying on me? <laughs> <laughs> and the way you do that is by realizing that you must have a low opinion of yourself if you continue attracting people who have a low opinion of you. So anyway, that's karma is a memory and we incarnate to learn lessons to overcome it and to become, think, did you ever see the movie uh, Groundhog Day? Yes, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I think that's an allegory for what we're all going through. Yeah. Which is, we, we keep uh, coming back to February 2nd and experiencing the same things over and over again until we deal with them in the right Until we way. get it right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, and then we can move on to February 3rd. So that's kind of what uh, what I see is what reincarnation is about and what what our whole existence is about. We're, we're evolving. We're evolving and evolving. Mm. Uh, we're go right now passing from the third into the fourth density. And uh, the third density, let me just, do you want me to quickly tell you what the densities are? Yes, please, one? please, yeah, yeah. First density is uh, matter, uh, wind and fire and matter, you know, just the four or five basic elements of, you know, from the Greeks. Uh, and that would be earth before there was any life on it. And that lasted a long time, something like three quarters of a billion years. Mm. Then second density would be uh, organic matter that moves, you know, uh, one-celled animals, plants, uh, fish, uh, animals all the way up that, uh, that, that don't have self-awareness, that are just, you know, the deer uh, that you see in the woods or the antelope or the uh, fish in a pond. Mm. Then third density is life that is self-aware, that can think about its own existence. That's you and me talking about what we're talking about mm. tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's third density. Fourth density is when you realize that you're a uh, eternal spiritual being having a physical, temporary physical experience. And at this fourth density, you have to make a choice between uh, service to self or service to others service to self would be 
uh, a sociopath or somebody who's, you know, politicians. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I won't name <laughs> names. <laughs> <laughs> who are looking out for themselves. Um, whereas service to self is a service to others is when you realize that we're all one, we're all connected, we're all in this thing together. And uh, you use your talents and, and your uh, abilities to help others, you know, that rather than just going out and trying to making a billion dollars and, you know, living it up, you, you get your kicks out of uh, using your talents to serve others and to help them have a better life. Mm. Then that's fourth density. Fifth density is where you concentrate on uh, wisdom. So fourth density is love. Fifth density is wisdom. And it's fifth density is the last density where we actually incarnate in physical reality. Sixth density is where you combine wisdom and love. And that is on in a non-physical realm. Seventh density, I don't know much about because the people who have given this information are usually in fifth or sixth density. And they don't mm. know what seventh, seventh density is either. But it's the last stage before you return to the source. But when you return to the source, you keep your personal awareness. In other words, you are part of it, but you're still aware that you are you. Mm -hmm. and, okay. uh, and then probably it all starts over again. Most people think we've been around that horn several times already. Really? So, yeah? Yeah. So anyway, I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah. it kind of makes sense to me. And who knows? It may not be 100% right, but I think it's kind of the right track, if you will. No, that's From what I've studied, it's... I've been studying this thing for a long, long time. Mm. I've, written, and I've written about, you know, several dozen books on this <laughs> subject. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so, so if someone were to be reincarnated then, do they always know or do they always get something telling them that, you know, that they've been here before sort of thing? It happens, but it's not common. Uh, it's not, no. So, so I could technically be reincarnated now and I've, to my knowledge, never had anything to tell me that I am, but I could still be reincarnated. I could still have a backstory from X amount of years before I come on the planet, yeah? Chances are you probably do uh, mm -hmm. have uh, other lives. The, uh, the way I've heard it described that makes sense to me is that the, the soul, if you will, is like a hand. It is, you know, the hand, and each of the fingers is an incarnation. So they're, they're not, they don't overlap, mm. except where they all connect, which would be the body of the soul. And it also might be compared to the sub conscious mind there there really are several levels of mind there's the conscious mind which is what you and i are using right now to communicate there's the unconscious mind which is what is uh, our programmed mind from this particular life when you drive a car uh you, you don't think about all the things no, you no. do autopilot yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you're, you go on down the road you know when you come to the U united states however you're going to have to start thinking about it because you're going to be driving on the other side of the road you know? <laughs> that's when you realize how programmed you are from your you know home country uh driving uh habits. yeah that's right i've done it in greece before greece drive on the <laughs> other side of the road as well and it was like oh okay wrong way round the roundabout that's all yeah. no one saw me <laughs> and i knew a guy who was jogging in london he was uh from from my hometown of richmond virginia and he was jogging and he looked the wrong way when he went off the curb and he got splattered he was oh, he's no gone. yeah yeah Jeez. because he, you know, he just thought about his programmed mind, look to the left, I guess, instead of the right. Or yeah. Oh, so, it's anyway. so, easy, so easily done, though, isn't it? You know? Yeah, it is. So anyway, that's uh, so there's the conscious mind, the unconscious mind. Then there's the subconscious mind, which would include your memories from your past life. Mm. There are people and I've taught, I've interviewed several who uh, who do past life regressions. They put you into a hypnotic state and take you back. Uh, to previous lives. Uh, then there's the universal kind of conscious mind, or the sort of the conscious mind of humanity here on Earth. It would be everybody's memories. And then you've got the the overall uh, mind that has that knows everything. 
that has all memories included. So it's one mind, but it's just different levels of it. And when you incarnate, I've known people that, that you know, we, we, have, we kind of go through a veil of forgetting where we don't, uh, when we are children, we don't remember our past life. Few do, just like the ones we're talking about at the University of Virginia. Children who remember past lives were uh, an unnatural and untimely death where they, um, they were either killed in battle, like the boy who was shot down in uh, Iwo Jima. They were killed in an accident, an automobile accident or any other kind of accident. They had some kind of a disease that killed them be before their time and they come back pretty quickly. And so perhaps that's the reason they often remember. Yeah. But I have met people and talked to people and interviewed people who had a kind of spontaneously uh, remembered a past life because something triggered it. You know, they were on a one guy was uh, who told me that he remembered a, a past life and it came back to him vividly was on a train from Warsaw to uh, he was going to Auschwitz to you know to visit that uh, site there the historical thing just a few years ago and he recalled that he had been on a train wow. from Warsaw to Auschwitz where he was executed you know in the gas chamber so and it all came back to him so it does happen but it's rare and yes. uh, usually so, so things can trigger it as well if you see it, something can, from that life uh, yeah. Like you, you've mentioned Auschwitz there. So if you if you go there, you're visiting. It could be like, whoa, bang, there it is, back in the room. Yeah, yeah, and then you suddenly have the memory. You said it's uh, you know it's even more than you know you've had probably experienced deja vu. Oh and, yeah, I, I was going to come on to that. Yeah, deja vu. Do you think that's in relation as well, or can I? Th I think it can be. I think it's usually we have often have precognitive dreams where. Uh, you know, the time is a kind of construct of this particular reality. And uh, we people do have precognitive dreams. And they mm. uh, and then when you when it happens, that's when they when what they dreamed about, which they don't remember consciously, when that actually happens, comes to pass, they'll have that feeling of deja vu. Yeah. So, that's yeah. But uh, it could be a past life. It could be. Yeah. In fact, I, I think I've had one or two like that. I, I spent a lot of time in France, and I'm convinced that I must have been a druid. <laughs> <laughs> I see, you know, and I think I may have gone off uh, in the uh, Crusades because there's this castle called Chateauneuf in uh, Burgundy that uh, when I first came up to it, it was like, Whoa, it's like I'm returning from the crusade. Yeah, just drawn to it. <laughs> yeah, so who knows? But maybe, could be. Yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, you've, got, you've got your own podcast as well, have you? Well, I had a podcast for about three years, and I, I, uh, was do I did it once a week. Yeah. So I did a, well over 100 of them, and uh, I got a lot of good information. I, I interviewed... Uh, Near-death survivors, people who remembered past lives, people who were studying paranormal uh, stuff, and uh, quantum physicists and medical doctors, psychiatrists who do past life regressions, all mm. of that stuff. But after about three years, I, I was just kind of got burned out on it because, and I was busy, so it yeah. took time. It took a lot of time. It does. Really it did. does. I, I find that myself sometimes. It's like I love like a little week off here and there, you know. It's, it's yeah. nice to keep it consistent, but sometimes perhaps I'll do two in one week, sit on one for a week and then take <laughs> a little break because you do get burned out quite easily, especially if you've got other stuff on during the day and everything. You know, it's uh, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of time. And yeah. the family, the, the family doesn't always like it. <laughs> yeah. Shout out, well, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's right. I, you know, I kind of miss it, but I'm fortunately get asked uh, to do podcasts with people like you and so you know i get my fix yeah good that. man good man that's <laughs> as, as long as we're getting our fix that's what it's all about um so so what are you working on at the moment anyway you're you're obviously working on something at the moment i am i'm you know uh, if you look at if you can people should go to my website and click on books shmartin.com and you'll see that i've got over 36 up there <laughs> and they aren't, they aren't, that's not all the books. I've got a lot of business books I've written. I'm actually, 
working with a couple of people who are uh, publishing books, doing some editing, designing the books, designing the covers, and and I publish them. I pub can you know publish them on Amazon and hmm. and uh, also through Ingram Spark, which is our big uh, book consolidator here in the uh, United States. So if anybody wants to write a book and wants help or has already written one and needs uh, somebody to put it into a form where they can publish. It, I will do that and turn over the files to them. They can upload it themselves. Or if they want me to publish it, I'll publish it. Excellent. Uh, and that's really what I'm busy with now. I've got right here to my right is my desk where I have uh, your workload. Uh, all that stuff piled up over there to, <laughs> to get through. Busy but I man. enjoy it. I love books. Yeah, I love books. Nah, so. brilliant. That's what it's all about. What's, what's the proudest book that you have written then? Well, I, you know, there, I, I would say it's, between two, the, the, non, the nonfiction book that is done the best, and I think probably can be the most helpful to people who read it is the one that I mentioned earlier called Life After Death, Powerful Evidence You Will Never Die. The, the book that I really uh, probably personally like the most is called The Secret of Life, An Adventure Out of Body and the Mind, which is a, a paranormal kind of novel mm. thriller that uh, where the it's a heroine it actually most of the book takes place from the uh, point of view of a woman who is trying to find out what why her father has fallen into a coma and she goes to the island of martinique in the caribbean and uh, <clears throat> she actually has an out-of-body experience where she she uh, learns a lot of stuff and finds a lot of stuff. And this book won uh, the Writer's Digest uh, Book Award for fiction. And it also won uh, uh, Independent Publishers First Prize for visionary fiction. So great job. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, uh, it's a fun book. And I, it just was more than, than just a novel because it has some, metaphysical stuff in there too yeah some meaning write, in so. there as well yeah 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 so there you go excellent stuff uh before you go we mentioned aliens briefly earlier on can we mm -hmm. just touch a little on it i know you said that's a whole other podcast and i'm happy to do that whole other podcast <laughs> as well if you are okay because i i'm fascinated by aliens and i do believe in aliens i do believe there are extraterrestrials out there why wouldn't there be uh just Briefly or not briefly, if you want, it's up to you. What's, what's well, your, what's your uh, yeah, thoughts? Well, um, yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that, it, like, I'm like you. I, why wouldn't there be? <laughs> the universe is huge. Exactly. And uh, this can't be the only place that life exists. I just published a book recently called uh, Messages from uh, Message, Messages of Enlightenment by a lady in California who has a PhD. She's a uh, psychologist hmm. and she uh, has in her in her work as a psychologist came across a woman who was about 20 years ago who <clears throat> had what she refers to as a walk-in where there really were two personalities in in her body the okay. woman who she who came to her for help and an alien who had uh, kind of attached her himself, itself. I don't know whether they mm -hmm. were masculine or feminine. And she conducted many interviews with this alien who supposedly was from between the fifth and sixth densities, which I mentioned earlier in the yeah. podcast, and <clears throat> has and answered many questions that, you know, what is reality, those sort of things. And and uh, it's it's just out. It's called uh, Messages of Enlightenment. And also, uh, there's a second part of it. It's uh, Psyche of a Pedophile Priest, because <clears throat> one of the uh, souls that she investigated was at the behest of a priest who had been tried and convicted of uh, molesting children. Mm. And, and the alien, the uh, exist, uh, extraterrestrial, got into, you know, what the causes of that, what was going on in his psyche that caused him to abuse children that were in his care. Mm. And uh, so it's pretty fascinating.
fascinating. <clears throat> the uh, other one is the raw that I mentioned earlier, who was a sixth density or is a sixth density group soul. It's a whole civilization in, in one soul that uh, I've written a book about called uh, Your Guide to Achieve Fourth Density. And again, you can come on my website and, uh, and click on the, uh, go to the book page and you'll see yeah. the the uh, cover there and click on it and you can find out where more about it. And yeah, we'll, we'll pop all the not. links in, Stephen, as well, if you are right. It goes into a lot about in course or about this uh, alien and how he was originally in Egypt and uh, helped uh, build the pyramids and all that stuff. I mean, it, it's it's really pretty fascinating stuff. So, you know, something we could talk about maybe another time, but- Hey, 100%, yeah. 100%. Let's do that. <laughs> we'll pencil that and we'll keep in touch and we'll definitely do that. That'd be fantastic. Very good, very good. Great stuff. All right, I guess yeah. bef before I let you go, then is there anything else you want to plug? Any shout outs, any acknowledgements, anything we might have missed out that you'd like to get in there? <laughs> Just to say again that, uh, you know, check out my website if you want to know the services I offer for publishing. Uh, there's also a, a little uh, button up in the menu that says publishing services. Click on that. And it'll tell you more. Or, if uh, you know, buy, my, buy some of my books. I think yeah. you'll enjoy them. Treat yourself, guys. Treat yeah. yourself. You know what the, the website. shmartin.com. Get on there. Links are even down by there for you. You just click on them. Takes you straight there. Click on books in the drop down and away you go. Happy days. Yeah. Fantastic. Very good. Good, man. Well, Stephen, it's been a pleasure meeting you and a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, definitely up for a part two if you're up for that as well. Uh, let's, Very let's, good. Talk, let's talk alien sometime. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> okay. Very Brilliant. good. I've, I've enjoyed it. Thank you so Me much. Me too, my friend. Thank you so much. Stephen Harley Martin, everybody, uh, on the Cayman Show. Thank you for coming on. Stephen Harley Martin. Woohoo!